what the Japanese uh, say, they call, they use the word koninki, which means second spring. So we can breeze through menopause into the second spring of our life and really embody it. So Dr. Anna, I'm so excited to have you back on the show and chat to you. It was such a popular episode last time. A very, very warm welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here with you again. Yeah, it's really fun. I had so much fun last time. And I think everything you've been doing and I've been following since your work in the last year really builds on what you were doing before. And I know that you, like me, are totally invested in women kind of healing from the inside, but also looking and feeling good. And you brought up some amazing things that I want to talk about later uh, to help them really kind of have glowing skin and look and feel amazing and have lovely hair and all the things that we get affected by, right, in perimenopause. I'm 46 and I'm noticing now that the things are starting to shift. You know what I mean? I have to work a little bit harder at stuff. Um, so first of all, though, let's talk about your book, because this has just come out, Menu Pause. Uh, do you want to introduce the book and, and why you've written this one in particular? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this has been a really fun book to write. And it really, like, you know, just to even play with the name menopause, right? There are, and there's magic in the pause of our lives. So instead of menopause, menopause. And what menopause comprises are five different menu plans because that each pause something different. Because when I'm working with clients and, you know, virtually, et cetera, Oftentimes they'll be doing something and I'll be like, okay, well, and they're stuck, they hit a plateau, they're not getting, you know, they're stagnant or they're not getting an improvement in results. So we're like, okay, we need to pause this or let's, you know, try this. And so these are the most five, the common five pauses that I've used. And it is an extension because in, since 2015, when I took my Keto Green program online and um, with my Magic Menopause program, and then wrote my first book, The Hormone Fix, which introduced the whole keto green, keto alkaline concept of eating, getting our bodies into ketosis and how powerful that is, but in a healthy way with the alkalinizers, the green. So it's not like eating high fat food all day long. And, and it is very, very different. It's a way of eating and it's also a lifestyle. And then Keto Green 16 came out 16 day plan, both the omnivore plan and the vegan plan and, you know, amazing results. And then, you know, sometimes there's a plateau, certain people are stuck in certain, um, for certain reasons. And so the, these are the five plans that came from doing that. And when we got the publisher said she wanted another cookbook with my recipes, because loving my recipes, and they're all really hormone balancing. She, we came up with this name, Menu Pause. And when you know she said that name, I was like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. And so fun, it really brings a smile to your face. And I think that opens the conversation around menopause too. And um, so that's where we're at here. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I think, you know, for women to feel like this second half, that's the way I'm looking at it. I want to embrace this, right? I know I'm going to reach that stage in the next few years that's coming, um, but to really embrace it because I think it should be the second half should be the best part of your life, right? Because you've kind of, a lot of times we've raised our children, we've actually getting a little bit of time back and we can enjoy our kids and then effectively our grandchildren after that. And I know you very recently had a grandchild. You just look too young for me to call you grandma. Um, so but funny. congratulations on that. Yeah, still working on that grandma name. We'll see, she's yeah. just two months now and she's just amazing, super cute. Um, just loving, loving having this time with her and also had to recognize like the way we think about how the second half of our life is going to be, or what does it look like to be a grandma? These thoughts really affect our behaviors, mental attitude and our um, destiny. We, sometimes we have to really be aware. And I want to share with you, Angela, this was so fascinating to me that when I first found out that I was going to become a grandma, it's like, okay, you know, my all the emotions that come with that. Um, and it, I all of a sudden started gaining weight, canceling my gym workouts. And it wasn't until after Aunt Elisa was born, which I did deliver her, by the way. So I got to deliver it's her. Amazing. Amazing. And as what I recognized was uh, that all of a sudden I'm buying pastries. Like I don't buy pastries, but in my mind, this is what a grandma did. And in my mind, I didn't know my grandparents. They died before I was born. And my mom died when my firstborn was only a year old. And so like to me, grandma is dead and sick. And I was starting 
to embody that wow. subconscious thought. And when I realized it, it was like, whew, I had to convert that image to like, you know, flying in a private jet across the Atlantic with all grandkids in tow and we're just, you know, having a blast. And so I had to really shift my thought process. That is true for menopause. And like, I like what the Japanese uh, say, they call, they use the word koninki, which means second spring. Mm -hmm. So we can breeze through menopause into the second spring of our life and really embody it. It's not a loss. Like we, yes, we're not reproductive. We're not going to have children during the stage, but really look at the benefit, the gain, the, the blossoming, because we've had a lot of time to fertilize our soil, so to speak. And there's healthy soil and unhealthy soil. Our responsibility to rejuvenate that and create a healthy foundation so that we can be blossoming in the second spring of our lives. Mm, I couldn't agree more. I love that analogy. I, I agree with you. I think it's hard though, isn't it? Because I, I look at it now and it's like every decade, you know, there is a change. And I think um, it, it, it occurred to me, I remember looking at my husband a year or so ago and going, oh my God, I'm 45. Should we just quickly have another baby? <laughs> He's like, really? And my, 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 my children were like, no, that would just be so embarrassing. Like we're too old for you to have a baby now. And you're too old mum kind of thing. Uh, even though I'm not, they're just, they see you in that way, right? Because they, they've moved on, right? I've got teenagers. So they're like, we don't need another baby. Um, and I think it is difficult, isn't it? Because for men, they don't have that sudden loss in fertility and i think it is it's something that's in the back of my mind and i guess for people listening to this you know who who are going through that at the moment and all the women you've worked with what would you say because as you say we should be embracing the new side but how can you sort of not feel that actually you just feel slightly less complete right because now you can't do that anymore and that's such a beautiful that is so beautifully well put like okay i'm going to miss my opportunity to do this forever if I don't do it now, yeah. right? Because that's the transition. I'm going to miss the opportunity to have another baby. And so then that's where that subconscious, those thoughts come in and you think, okay, well, how can I embrace the pause, the magic in the pauses of our life till there's maybe a grandbaby, God willing, in the future? Or, you know, really looking at this, and I will say, if there's a difficult decision like this in your life that you're thinking, God, is this the next right step for me? Then I fast and pray. I do three days of fasting and prayer, and then I make that decision. So you know what resonates truth for you. And with that said, regardless, it's empowering, empowering your ovarian function because the healthier, longer we maintain that ovarian function, which could be another 10 years for you, Angela. So the, the longer your longevity will be. I mean, we can't, I would say can't, um, ever beat mother nature, we have to work with her. So empowering our physiology so that we continue to ovulate through, I'm 55 now, I'm finally postmenopausal. I can say that now. <laughs> You've made the so finally. But at 39, it, like I, I was early menopause diagnosis. At 48, I was spiraling high FSH, high LH, reverse that. And then now at 55 so like what i teach the keto green way empowering and you've got the hard part you've got the diet you've got the fitness you've got the mental attitude you've got the healthy relationship you're, you're like you are set up for success and it's maintaining and really becoming aware of those subconscious messages too those beliefs i love it when you were talking that uh, earlier as well about the the um perception that you had of a grandma and you know you don't realize do you these things these internal paradigms you have they just creep up on you and i'm always just reframing things all the time because i think we have to and that's a journey a lifelong commitment to yourself right if you really want to be the best you and live your best life you've got to reframe those things and the things that are happening you know for you not to you i think um Absolutely. as well yeah, so I, I love that idea of the menu pause. Um, one thing I want to ask, actually, because I know that I've had clients and listeners who, who've struggled with this, is when they have primary ovarian insufficiency, um, what have you found in terms of, because this is where they just don't have the same egg quantity, have you found any of the things that you're advocating in this book can help with conditions like that? It can definitely help. It can definitely help. I have not studied it, but from a physiologic perspective, the diagnosis of prime uh, primary ovarian insufficiency is 
complex, right? And we really are still uncertain as to all the etiologies, but we look at autoimmune and we have to address the HPA axis. The ovaries are there, they're functioning. So it's, it's to stimulate, it's how do we stimulate them? How do we like nourish them? How do we fertilize them, so to speak? And in the way we have to, it, it is detoxification, heavy metal, mold, you know, energetic, I mean, all those aspects. And for me, keto green is kind of the basic foundation, eliminating sugar, intermittent fasting, give your body a chance to heal itself and fight off what needs to be, you know, uh, fought and, and then healing, healing the gut and balancing the hormones in a cyclic way. And sometimes it does mean adrenal adaptogen. Sometimes it does mean cyclic bioidentical hormones in the, in these cases to help help maintain a rhythm and to help support um, the ovaries and the uterus and the entire HPA axis. It's probably one of the most difficult, difficult things that we deal with as an obstetrician, because like our goal is to help you get pregnant and maintain a healthy pregnancy and deliver the perfect child. And so, you know, we work to, you know, I've worked with clients and, and had seen that devastation of primary ovarian failure, but I've also seen it reversed. So interesting. Yeah. And I think it's not uncommon, is it, when people have been taking the contraceptive pill for a long time, that just really can screw up their body a bit as well. Um, it's just, yeah. And as you were saying, like the, the more ovulation events you can have, like it's so protective for your, like your bone health, your brain health, your metabolic health, isn't it? I think we haven't really even understood the impact of the massive use of birth control pills that we've had over the last 50 years, because, you know, it goes into our water systems, right? And, um, and then the endocrine disruptors into our, you know, our bodies, our children's bodies, and the effect on the effect on reproductive hormones from a generational level too. I mean, uh, synthetic progestin is a hormone disruptor. Um, and so we have to realize that and really understand the consequences of it. And I'm really proud of some colleagues that are speaking up to bring awareness. I mean, the pendulum has to, has to swing to really create this awareness because it's a mass economic um, issue in so many ways, right? Certainly, uh, you know, protecting from unintended pregnancies, but that's, you know, that's not 100% of pill use. And secondly, is understanding, you know, when we, when I check someone's hormones, I look at their urinary metabolites, right? So when you're on birth control pills, what else is in those urinary metabolites? There are synthetic progestins that are in there that then urine goes into our water and waste systems. And, and from what I know, we don't have amazing ways to really filter and clean that drinking water. We, you know, create aseptic drinking water with chlorine and, um, and the chemical treatments, but that's still like not taking out some of the, the other things that are in our water. And that is still an area that I don't completely understand. And I mentioned before we started talking is that we'll be, I'll be speaking at Women in Tech for a global summit on one of the things, the food chain. And, um, and my topic of interest is hormone disruption because it does create fertility problems it can create immune issues. It can create, and according to the French, they phrase it this way, gender identity confusion. And you have to wonder the, you know, the feminization of our um, fish in our oceans and our um, lakes. And, and it's a big, it's a global concern. And my concern is for, of course, the next generation of humans that are coming into this world too and how safe that environment is. And when we see 287 chemicals plus in umbilical cord blood, we really have to start raising red flags about this issue. And it affects, it affects our youth, it affects their development. I think the you know, compounding increase in autism is, a, is, is partial to this. And I also think all the hormone disruption, the earlier, breast cancers and we have to we have to raise the red flag around this mm, we definitely do and also we're seeing like significantly earlier puberty right partly i think due to 
some children are just actually really, really overweight too young. They've been almost overfed, right? And, and so much sugar, but also there's all these hormone disruptors in their environment. Um, what would you say are the key things that you think women listening to this who maybe are doing it for themselves, maybe they're thinking about having a baby, maybe they've already got children, that they should be trying to stay away from if they don't want to be taking on board these estrogen mimickers into the body? Yeah, there's a couple of things I would say. First, I would just look at my own family. So I'm a mom. I have four daughters. So 32 year old, who's my belle fille in French, belle fille stepdaughter, but literal translation is beautiful girl, which sounds oh, much funny. nicer. And the same thing for stepmom yeah. would be belle mère. Call me belle mère. Don't call me stepmom, right? Oh. Belle mère, beautiful mom. Uh, so, so she's 32 and like, so different mom, but started her period at 14. My firstborn, who's now 25, started her period at 15. Um, my 22 year old, 14, and my 14 year old, 13. So is that just, I mean, and I'm more organic and whole foods and athletic, all good weights, you know, it really um, makes me wonder you know, and I was 16 when I started mine. So it's fascinating to me just in one household, when you look at a household of girls, what's going on. So we are still, I mean, I think that there's not good research looking at that as far as, you know, slightly earlier age of puberty, but I, I mean, it's dramatic. And from 25 to 14, that's a decade, that's a decade of difference. And it really does, it really does make me wonder. Um, what is happening, what's happening in our environment, because that's fast, that's fast shift. And I'm curious, I'd be curious to our audience to see what they've noticed in their family or in their lineage. And certainly there are other issues that can contribute, but I do think endocrine disruptors is one of them. And I think what we wanna do, especially prior to pregnancy at any age or in, in any way, we need to do this for maintaining healthy ovarian function. So we age optimally. Ovarian function is a marker for longevity. So optimizing it through detoxing. So for instance, my keto green detox, but I supplement with things that I use and I use for my clients is the mighty maca plus adrenal adaptogenic with 30 other superfoods to detoxify, decrease inflammation and support your body's adrenals, adrenal glands and, and adaptogens. So your body's natural production of DHEA and progesterone. And then I'll add in a detox. I use my keto green detox supplement, which is liver detox, detoxification support for phase one and phase two it has things like milk thistle in it and really is um, very supportive because we want to open up our receptor sites and kind of like doing a filter change when you get your oil changed. So doing a detox like that to really support the liver and detoxification pathways is key. And I would also make sure that there's healthy bowel movement, you're having a bowel movement every day. And if not really work on that with probiotics and, you know, and fasting and cleanses to help reactivate healthy bowel function and peristalsis, because elimination is a huge way to detoxify. And the gut bacteria that we have within us is a significant, I mean, that's, that's, that's like your first line of defense. That's, you know, yeah. that's, so critical to get that healthy for hormonal balance, for brain health balance, for serotonin production, for detoxification of estrogen, the estrobilum. So, and, and these things like birth control pills and chemicals, endocrine disruptors, I'm drinking out of a paper cup. I've got my daughter doing a test for high school next year. So ran out this morning and uh, run back and pick her up. And, uh, and so, you know, thinking about uh, what's you know, what's lined in this, you know, should be cardboard, but what's it, you know, what's it been treated with? Um, and plastic lids, taking off your plastic lids, not drinking out of plastic bottles. It is a cumulative effect that's incredibly dangerous to our bodies. Chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, cleaning our vegetables, you know, growing. I mean, it sounds crazy, but I think it's going to come down to some of those family farms, you know, small in a 10 by 10 plot in planners, you can, you can do some damage growing some good stuff out there, but adding some things very locally grown, but using organic free range, wild caught, asking for it. But even with that said, we have to support our detoxification pathways because, you know, there's mass contamination. 
Yeah, I agree. It's everywhere. That's the thing, isn't it? And when you think like what you were saying about the umbilical cord, it is just it's staggering and frightening because what's happening with with these with these babies? Um, what would you say for women who have? Because um, I have some questions actually that people have been sending me in advance of this interview. Uh, for people who are in their forties and they're getting to that point in sort of earlier perimenopause when they're getting really bad pain, they're getting very um, heavy bleeding. Um, and at this point, a lot of doctors are like, well, I can give you um, something to reduce blood flow. Often at this point, their cycles are becoming shorter and you can get to this point where you feel like you're in perpetual like period mode because it's like I'm bleeding and then now I'm bleeding again, but also the length of it because progesterone kind of, she just sort of sneaks out the back door, doesn't she? Whereas estrogen really makes her presence felt, I think, and you get these swings and you're more aware of it. Whereas I think that lowering of progesterone that contributes to things like heavy bleeding and also anxiety, we can't underestimate that. What would you say, like, let's pick first for sort of abdominal cramping and heavy bleeding. What can women do and how much can they do naturally before they need to actually bring in any kind of meds if necessary? Yeah, and this is from my experience, as I learned through my own journey, reversing early menopause and bringing these um, practices into my patient base. And as I learned this and integrated this with more functional medicine, bioidentical hormones, empowering the body to heal itself, these things, I went from doing two to three surgeries per week to needing to do two to three major, major surgeries per year. So with that, like a hysterectomy or, you know, I didn't say eliminate them, but what a reduction. That's me. That's me in my practice. And so, you know, this is why I created products that help me and help my patients, but it would start with that. So that abdominal, of course, always first go get an ultrasound, get blood work done, see what's going on. If there's a lot of heavy bleeding, sometimes it's a two month patch with continuous birth control pill while we work on other things. If it's gotten to that level and you have anemia, we want to kind of stop your bleeding. So we'll do that. But this is, that's very short term. We still have to address the underlying issue. And one, one thing that research has shown is that women who have had, this is recently published, women who have had a hysterectomy have a significant increased risk of diabetes. Women who have their ovaries removed have an even more significant increased risk of di diabetes and heart disease. And so it says to me, it doesn't say doing a hysterectomy is gonna increase your risk. It says to me the underlying insulin resistance caused the uterine bleeding dysfunctions that required the hysterectomy. Because in my practice, as we implemented the keto green approach, intermittent fasting, cleansing, detoxification, the you know need to do that surgery was eliminated. So this is what we have to do. We have to, and this is why I say in perimenopause, getting keto greens, not just a good idea. For me, it's mandatory. It's mandatory for brain health. It's mandatory to preserve our organs. I've been there too. I mean, I had dysfunctional bleeding at 48 when I was spiraling into my second menopause, doing keto green, painless cycles, re, you know, restored cycles, all of that all of that came into flow again for another many years. So, you know, it, it, and it, it is possible. It's possible at any stage. So doing this and then supplementing, I'll use progesterone. I will use bioidentical progesterone. I have my own balance cream, which has progesterone, pregnenolone and tripeptide because, you know, it's anti-aging. So we throw that in there and, um, and using that to help with the regulation of the menstrual cycle, because we need to add back progesterone, but it's not just about that. You've got to resuscitate your adrenals. You've got to resuscitate your ovary. You have to detox chemicals, stress, you know, and, and support your, um, your body with adaptogens and good micronutrients. That's all, that's all part of it too. And that, pain will reduce. I had a client who's um, 36 years old. And since she was 16, she was struggling with terrible periods. And she actually was a, um, a, a Nashville visitor, you know, like someone flies into town to Nashville. She's the one, the VIP, she's the one who shows them around. She goes, I was missing. She said she was missing, you know, initially one to two days a month. Now it was three to four days a month you know, and sometimes more because of painful cramping, painful cramping, painful breast, feeling like she can't get out of bed, having to constantly change a pad. 
and she was exhausted, but she wanted to have a baby with her fiance in the future. And so she ended up um, coming to see me and it's exactly what I did for her. And I said, first of all, you know, we're support and checked her labs, support her thyroid with adding iodine into her diet because she was um, thyroid antibody negative, but her thyroid was a little sluggish. So we added it in naturally. So sushi seaweed added in thyroid support like selenium from Brazil nuts and, you know, eat tyrosine rich foods like eggs and oysters. I mean, really, really good. So dietary management there also supplemented and had her do no dairy, no sugar, essentially keto green, intermittent fasting, eat within an eight to 10 hour, you know, um, eight hour, win sorry, six to eight hour window and, and, and really focus on that as well as I supplemented, I supplemented her with Mighty Maca additional detox because like we're not going to miss another you know another month mm -hmm. uh, additional detox and a progesterone in the second half of her cycle and just a topical is that your cream. progesterone cream that you have or was it a, a stronger i don't i don't know what the levels are within your cream was it your own cream that you were my using? own cream the balance oh, so, cream. wow interesting so okay so actually listeners could order your balance cream in those early stages of, of perimenopause to boost their progesterone rather than taking kind of micronized oral progesterone or something like that it's possible. Yes, you can try, definitely try and see how you do. We have a lot of, I mean, I definitely, that's what I use too. So, you know, I've created these products for me too. So it's, it's worth, definitely worth a try. And then she called me six weeks later and she said, Dr. Ann, I didn't even know my period was coming this month. And it's the first time and she was in tears. The first time in my life, she, her life that she remembered not having, I mean, she couldn't remember ever a period without pain. And so that's the significance. And it's really nice to say she's married now and um, they're getting ready to expect their first child. So that's the difference. That's the difference. But her quality of life improved. And from teenagers, it means that, you know, it's get, getting rid of the foods, the, the dairy, the sugar, the grains, focusing on giving your body time to heal itself, empower itself. And that can make a really big difference. And, I, you know, again, it is, it is, you know, it's free to do that stuff, right? When you supplement with progesterone, you supplement with Mighty Maca Plus, you, you know, add some additional support, but making these lifestyle changes are game changing for our physiology and it's by our design. And I think that's the most powerful thing I learned as a physician, the most humbling thing that I've learned as a physician. That I, I agree with you. And I've seen those kind of results as well. When you when you take on board what you're saying that in terms of reducing menstrual migraines as well, which are equally debilitating for people. Yes. I know that when I cleaned up, you know, I had insulin resistance from PCOS in my 20s, when I really, really focused on going very low carb, introducing lots of greens, my endometriosis went into rem remission, my PCOS didn't come back. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the thing. It, it's really powerful, these changes, but we just have to, some of us have to work harder because genetically we're predisposed, right? Like me and some of, and all of us have to work harder because of our environment. I think that's the critical thing, right? So there isn't really a woman listening to this who doesn't need to do this to a greater or lesser extent. Um, with your cream, how do you use that? Just, I'm just intrigued. Is this, because I know some of your products, they, they're, what I love about them is that they're beauty based at the same time, right? Because we want to look and feel good as well. Um, so how would you use your uh, progesterone cream? So the progesterone cream, if you're still cycling from after ovulation till the day your menses starts, so say day 14 to 28 of your menstrual cycle, first day of bleeding is considered day one. So typical ovulation in a 28 day cycle, everyone's cycle duration is, is different, but a typical one, and the reason it's 28 days, that's four weeks of birth control pills. That's where we get that 28 day from, right? It's, it's artificial. You need to know your individual cycle. It could be 30 days, could be 26 days. It could be what's your normal off of birth control pills. I mean, that's really important to understand. And, um, and so identifying that and then from day after ovulation to the time your period starts, is a good way to use it. And, and because my cream has progesterone and pregnenolone and tripeptide and other some essential oils, it's really a nice cream. You can apply it anywhere you see veins. So um, thin skin, but definitely around the forehead, around the eyes, around the mouth, on the neck and the decolletage area, the benefit of the combination of ingredients, it gets rid of sunspots, age spots. So, so that's really nice, you know, and I, I, that's a beneficial side effect, right? Yeah. Um, 
And my, actually one of my staff in my office from Puerto Rico, she's in her 60s when she started using it. She's like, Dr. Anna, look, because after she would apply the cream, she'd rub her hands. She's, she said, no more age spots on her hands. And I think, I, you know, of course, I see the same thing. So that's, a, that's the beauty component. I'm like, if we're going to balance our hormones, right? Beauty from the inside out, outside in. It just makes yeah. sense to me as a formulator. So I have that. And then if you're postmenopausal, you can do it every, you know, the first through the 25th of the month or, you know, take three to, I usually say do it every day, take three to five days off per week or one to two days. I mean, sorry, three to five days off per month and or one to two days off per week. We want to give your receptors chance to reset. And we always do it in a, it's a natural base. So my progesterone in one full pump is 20 milligrams of progesterone and 10 milligrams of pregnenolone approximately. And it is, um, you know, so it's a nice topical uh, formula. And again, that's typically, that's typically enough. However, if you're on other prescription medication, you really want to look, if you're on estrogen, you really want to look and monitor that um, if you have a uterus to make sure that you're not getting increased uterine thickness. And to date, and especially working with patients, I haven't seen that. Although if I have someone on higher estrogen, I'm trying to get them to withdraw bleed, which I don't postmenopause. I don't believe in you have to withdraw bleed postmenopausally, but I, I want to support and supplement and continue to get your body to make its own, yeah. own, own hormone for as long as and as much as possible. Okay, so not sort of replacing too early, if you like. So yes, you know, like, yeah. like starting with progesterone and not diving in and, and doing estrogen and progesterone, for example. Um, yeah. That's yeah. Start with progesterone. And also, you know, the concept is support, like clear up your receptors, support your adrenal glands, you know, add the adaptogens in, do all these things before you add additional hormone in the case of progesterone yeah. and yeah. And do you think it's possible for women to actually be able to make that transition healthily and effectively without ever taking any kind of replacement therapy? Or what's what, what have you found there? Because I know there's, there's some people who are very cautious about it. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm just curious on your view. Well, and I think I think it is. I mean, it's a like, you know, it's a transition time. So it really depends on how well you have everything else in place. For me, it's essential part of of what I do, right? And so it's why I, I see that I'm like, okay, we need to, you know, optimize here, supplement here. I want to get you as healthy, as strong as, as possible, but that's like the less than 10%, the 90% is in this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it depends on our stress level, our perceived thoughts around what we're going through, how well supported we are, how well nourished our body is and an imbalance we are. I think then it's possible to breeze through without anything. I just see so much stress course patients are you know clients come to me because they have issues so pretty much there's you know we're going to clean up empower your body and because i see clients virtually i'm not prescribing so um for them if i haven't seen them so you know doing these things naturally it is is supportive for a seamless transition yeah. but i don't see it without like for me i, I getting up to have Mighty Maca Plus now as soon as, and I'll have a keto green smoothie. And this is part of my routine. It's part of what keeps me healthy and strong and, and clear. And it's when I don't do it, it's feel like, okay, I'm feeling that, you know, a little bit more sluggish, a little bit more likely to cancel my workout, a little bit, you yeah. know, more <laughs> likely to get into bed early, yeah. and which is okay. You have to listen to your body, but you also have to support it. If we're out in a more natural environment longer, right? We're hiking, we're camping. We do a lot of that versus being in an office building or under artificial lights and under high amounts of book launch stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, all good. it's all good. And it's all good. But you know, it's like, okay, what do we need at this season in our life to support ourselves? Don't struggle through. Look, we can, you know, work with work with transitioning other things later, but let's support our body, optimize our body's ability to breeze through menopause. And it's like puberty. Some people like just have start their periods and no big deal. And others have a lot of trouble, but we have to fix the physiology because we're designed to not have trouble. Yes. Right? I think people forget keep that, keep right? Keeping. Exactly. There weren't, there wasn't replacement hormones so long ago, but then we lived a healthier lifestyle. As you say, we weren't exposed to all these endocrine disruptors, mm -hmm. the artificial lights, the stress, relentless stress that people have. Relentless. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've done a lot of travel around the world. And in my book, Many Paws, I talk about menopause around the world. And certainly other, other cultures, strong, healthy, old, with, um, they're not on, you know, stem cells, peptides, hormones, this, that, and the other thing. I think, you know, I mean, we have to, we have to look, okay, how is our lifestyle? What's our mindset? Am I happy with? Yeah, I'm going to be happy with, you know, smile lines and laugh lines, but I'm going to reduce them as much as I can too. I'm going to like, I'm going to fight back on some of these things, not premature. I'll have them in time, but nothing premature aging is inflammation. Yes. And and that's what I fight against. Mm, I agree, which actually brings me to my last question for you, because that is something that I think a lot of women really do struggle with around menopause as that as estrogen then finally, because obviously at first we have a degree of dominance, right? And then it starts to really drop off that loss in collagen and elastin and skin elasticity. I mean, it's, it, it is, it's hard, right? Because suddenly you just feel like, and the dryness and things, what do you recommend there um, in terms of helping to keep those wrinkles at bay for as long as possible? Yeah, well, this is a, a passion project for me because, you know, I went through early menopause at 39 and, um, you know, in that vaginal dryness and that struggle was very prevalent to me. And especially at that time, I was trying so hard to conceive a baby. And then a, my, part of my story is that through my journey around the world and things I've learned and the foods, the medicinal, you know, herbs and spices and um, ingredients that I put in Mighty Maca Plus to help reverse that early menopause to naturally conceive my daughter, Ava Marie at 41, the child I was told I would never be able to have. And right. so, so, you know, I dealt with that. And then of course, I really dug into this area for my patients, reversed that issue and started using vaginal bioidentical hormones. And when I um, you know, just like we will, you know, women will come in in their thirties for a Botox and fillers. I'm like, well, you know, if it's, if we're, you know, worried about up here, we need to worry about down on the pelvic floor even more because, you know, loss of, of sensation, vaginal dryness, discomfort, um, bladder leaks when we cough and sneeze, these are realities, but we can fight against it again. And so like clitoral atrophy, that's a, that's a big, that's a big thing. I mean, that's an issue. That's a primary orgasm organ for women. It's pure pleasure. And so, but it will shrink as we get older, but using ingredients like DHEA and, um, is something that I've used and created a product. When I closed my medical practice in 2015, my patients were like, Dr. Anna, no one will give us your vaginal vulvar creams. And so I said, I'd create something over the counter that was even better than anything I can write on a prescription. So that's where I came up with my product, Jolva. And we just now have a 30 day um, a tube too. We have the 60 day and we have the 30 day and um, really clean ingredients, no preservatives, no you know, chemicals, no hormone disruptors. It's pure DHEA, um, alpine rose plant stem cells and emu oil, coconut oil, and shea butter. Those are the key ingredients. And because we've used this to help, and you'll just read thousands and thousands of five-star testimonials on my website, apply it clitoris to anus. Yes, you can use it. You can massage it in. You can put it on toilet paper and wipe with it, but use it every day. The longer you use it, the better your results. I mean, I have a 65-year-old who messaged me a couple months back. She goes, Dr. Anna, my gynecologist says that I have the vagina of a 25 year old, which changed her life. Cause two years ago she got married. She's been using Jolva now since it came out in 2016, she was one of my patients. And so, um, but like two years ago, she got married to a younger man and she has an active sex life. And that wouldn't have been possible if, you know, without intervention at this point. Does that that give her like better vaginal tone? Was it, would you say like some women, for example, they feel like they can get a state of arousal, but they can't fully achieve an orgasm. Is it going to help with that? Like what, what can women expect when they use it? It definitely helps. It definitely helps. Of course, that is one area. I have a whole program called Sexual CPR and go through the many areas that can interfere with um, sexual health, pleasure, desire, and, and orgasm. So that is certainly one area because as again, just like anywhere else on our body, muscles will atrophy and that with that decrease nerve supply, decrease blood supply. So I always say with pelvic floor exercises, you can use Kegel balls. You could put Jolva over a a vibrator or Kegel balls, insert that 
vaginally as well and to help with you know to help maintain tone what we see what we know about research with vaginal dhea is that it does improve the three layers of the vaginal wall. Estrogen only does the mucosal layer, but to get to the, the deeper tissue, we want to address, we want to address the, you know, your body's ability to naturally produce its own moisture. And that's what we do. We turn back the clock. The vaginal and vulvar area is so vascular. People forget about the clitoris. You've got vaginal hormones, this, that, you forget about the clitoris, you forget about the anus, and that will have fissures. Forget about the urethra, we you know, treat with for incontinence and urgency symptoms. But if you heal the tissue around there and you work with these lifestyle changes and pelvic floor exercise, it's a combination of things. It can make a huge difference. And so Angela, just out this weekend though, is my new formula, my Jolva Kiss. So I say at the Girlfriend Doctor, we take care of your lips above <laughs> and below your hips. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. So this is more of an ointment and it's really good. Of course it can be used sexually, but it's really designed for the lips and you see the reduction in lip lines. And you can watch this change really quickly. It's not like we can see the what's happening to our clitoris or vulva very quickly. And you're not watching it every day, but you're looking, you know, you're looking over time at your at your lips. And when you see that it's making a change here, you know it's making a change down there. And, and that's critical for sexual function. I'm a 55 year old single woman with four children and a granddaughter. Like I want to preserve that function for, you know, the right time. I right. want to get some of these. Like I'm definitely. <laughs> this is called our lip duo. This is called our lip duo. I'm telling you an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Just like it's better than, and um, Jolva Kiss, seriously, better than filler. It's amazing. Amazing. Can you put the Jolva Kiss around your eye area as well? Yes, we have yeah. actually been people using Kiss and also Jolva around eye and neck because of the, you know, the DHA and the plant stem cells and the clean ingredients. I'm fine with it. And, um, and I never thought to use the, I definitely have used the, the Kiss also for um, men, also for um anal sex too you can use this i hear it sells out in the i'm speaking to sarah it sells out in the uk for men you have <laughs> they're, to. Not, they're not even it wasn't designed for them but yeah they are they love it yeah yeah exactly um, and so wow. for men and women and women too hemorrhoid surgeries fissures constipation issues you have to heal from that and we have a, a strong influencer in the us and she when you know she's a friend of mine and she was complaining about a hemorrhoid i'm like aren't you using jolva and she said well you know every once in a while i said use it and use it clitoris to anus use it on that hemorrhoid and she, you know, two months later, she goes completely gone. I feel so much better. Amazing. I mean, it is like, she'd been struggling with it for years, for years. Amazing. And is so- Is there anyone that can't like use it with the DHEA, like anyone that's kind of pro androgenic or anyone like with the maca powder, maybe if they've got a thyroid issue, are there levels in this, anyone that it's, it's that you would say, okay, maybe not for you, but it's fine. Or is it just fine for everyone? Well, it really, again, everyone is individual, so I can't say fine for everyone, but then everyone that I've used it on, we've had really amazing results. So the precautions I have, if you're currently undergoing treatment for breast cancer, but also remember too, that naturally that elevated higher levels of DHEA is a, is supportive of reduced risks of breast cancer. So we want to support our adrenals, right? And in everything that we do. And our DHEA levels are peak in our 20s and start to decline after that. So we want to make sure that we are, you know, we can supplement. Definitely when we're 40, 50, we're going to benefit from it. And I get questions sometimes about my PCOSers. They're like, well, we have high DHEA or high testosterone, but they're still struggling with incontinent symptoms, vaginal dryness, loss of orgasm, decreased sensation. Like you said, it's working at the intrinsic level. So I've not seen anyone using it have too high levels or anything like that. It's really working like a cosmetic and it is there. It's a cosmetic, you know, Jolva is a, a vulvar cosmetic to use on your most important real estate of your body. And so it is designed that way to be a topical formulation and clean. 
there's no there's no chemicals or parabens in it yeah, they're beautiful creams i know that i've tried uh, I've tried the job amazing thank you so much i know you've got to run because you've got to go and do to get your daughter from um from her test but um amazing to have you back on the show thank you so much for being generous with your time we will link to everything menu pools all the products in the show notes if people want to go and check all of that out but lastly just please share where are you most available where can people reach out to you and come and find you dr anna yeah, definitely come to my website at dranna.com. Check out my products and, and my blogs. And I have so many free resources for you there. So dranna, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And at the Girlfriend Doctor on social media. Definitely on Instagram a lot because I can check on my grandbaby there, pictures of her. She actually lives with us, but you still, my daughter will post pictures and I get to see her. And so I'm on Instagram a lot at the Girlfriend Doctor. I'm having a lot of fun with that. So definitely can interact with me there too. And with anything like, you know, with my book menu pause, seriously, it is, it is, I do recommend it. Six day plans, quick, effective, and a good way to, to, um, uh, you know, try to try this keto, the different plans in the keto green way and see as good as we're feeling, hmm, could I even feel better? Can I push that, you know, can I push that limit a little bit more? Can I be even better? I will say hashtag more sexy tomorrow than I am today and what's possible. And I would say it's possible at any age. Don't give up on yourself. Thank it's you. Awesome. Thanks, Angela. I could talk to you forever. Oh, I hope to see you in Paris when I'm there. Yeah, I'd love that. Paris or London, let's make it happen. Um, amazing. Thanks again, Anna. Thank you.